अज्ञानतिमीरा ज्ञानजलाशलाखया चक्षुर्मीलिता तस्म श्रीगुरव नम जय शील प्रभुपाद एंड थैंक यू टू आर चीफ गेस्ट हिज ग्रेस वैशिका प्रभु एंड हियर ग्रेस निरकला माता जी फॉर ऑनरिंग अस ऑल बाय देयर प्रेजेंस फॉर द एनुअल डे सेलिब्रेशंस ऑफ आई एस वी इस कॉन सिलकन वैली संडे स्कूल स्टूडेंट्स वी विल बिगिन विद द ग्रेजुएशन सर्टिफिकेट्स एंड गिफ्ट्स बीइंग अवॉर्डेड टू द चिल्ड्रन we will start with the kaishura class the kaishura kids are 12 years to 16 years of age and sukeshwari mata ji and vishakha mata ji are the teachers for that class sukeshwari mata ji sukeshwari mata ji हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू ऑल फॉर बीइंग हियर थैंक यू प्रभु थैंक यू माता जी we are going to get started and we're starting with giving away the certificates for all the kids who will be graduating sunday school this year um we will be starting with um damodar group damodar is um the age 3 years to 6 years so they will be getting a certificate from his grace by shishika prabhu and they will be getting a small present nishinga pendant from her grace nirakula mata ji so kids please do not offer obeisances here just come take the certificate stay on the side all together can pay obeisances so we can save on our time okay so as i call the names of the kids who are in the damodar group please um please make sure that they come ahead i'm just going to write the whole entire list aradhya nursing raju Advait Dipesh Bate Pati Ananya Krishna Nayak Aprameh Bhadra Gaudar Atharva Singh Damodar Kriplani Gaurang Thakur Gaurang Dasri Gaurika Verma Gopi Priya Shri Ramaneni Kapil Handa Kashvi Popat Krishna Priya Ayer Nimai Goswami Nitya Baroniya Nitya Maheshwari Prithviraj Singh Priyadarshini Chakraborty Ramanuja Jakkaraju Saket Sharma Sanvi Man Singh ka and Vanshil Rade Vijay let's have a big hand for all the kids who are graduating from the Damodar class so these are all the kids at the age group of 3 years to 6 years and all these kids So let's please I request everybody to maintain some silence. Can we have the parents come with the kids so that they can take the certificate and stand? I know with the little kids it's a little difficult.
Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Do we have anybody in Damodar who has not received the certificate? Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna So thank you so much We had the kids in the, we had the certificates in order but we didn't have the kids in order sorry for the confusion uh, We go ahead with Kaishora Kaishora are the oldest group of kids and um, So we're going to start get started with Kaishura kids. They are the age group of 12 to 16. Advait Srinivasan, Anshu Jaya Prakash, Apramay Singh, Avantika Sharma, Balaram Behera, Madha Varshne, Shivatsa Puranam, Shweka Shivakumar, Unnati Chandani, Please pay obeisances on the other side. Unnati Chandani and Brinda Amar Nani. Let's give a big hand for our Kaishora kids who are in the age group of 12 to 16. Our next group is Madan Mohan. Madan Mohan are the kids who are in the age group of 9 to 12. Abhay Behera. Abhijit Goda, Advaita Aluri, Ambarish Budaraju, Aname Singh. May I please request everybody to maintain some silence. Thank you. Aname Singh, Avanish Raula, Balram Chakraborty. Please pay obeisances on the other side. B Bhumi Mohite, Gita Priya Mantati, Krishay Handa, Nihar Bhat, Niharika Sapre, Parantapa Mal, Parth Doshi, Shubhabrata Nandi, Vasudev Chandani, Vaishnavi Muchukota and Vrindavan Sundar. 
Oh, Abai Behera's uh, certificate is received by Balram. Abai is not here today. Let's have a big hand for our Madan Mohan group. We're having... <laughs> Our final group is the Gopinath group, the kids who are graduating from Gopinath. This is the age group of kids who are in um, six to nine years of age. We start with Arushi Gurram. Arushi. So Arushi Gurram, Adyan, Adyan Srinivasan. Akshaj Goda, can you get in line according to your name? Yes, thank you. Anjalika Khare, Anishri Jaya Prakash, Arjun Maheshwari, Ashwij Badragodar, Avnish Lande, Deepika Narang, Sorry, we're having some costume difficulties here. <laughs> we have Avanish Lande, that is Deepika Narang. Thank you. Avanish Lande, Deep Driti Vagela, Gaurangi Patil, Gaurasundar Amarnani. Gayatri Buddha Raju, Ipsita Thakur, Madhav Chittur Shravan, Mukund Varshne, Nitai Goswami, Parantap Sodhi, Pon Kartikeyan Sarvanan, Pooja Ragala, Radhika Ayer, Raghav Bharadwaj, Shreya Verma, Siddhi Sabnes, and Vedant Shivakumar. Let's have a big hand for our Gopinath kids. Let's have a big hand for all the kids of Vedic Academy for having completed their one more year of Sunday school. Thank you all so much. So, yeah. So I would like to request. Huh? Um, we had to start Damodar gift uh, and certificate distribution. Some of you have got the wrong one because the kids so came so fast. Uh, I'm really sorry for that. So please come and collect with me afterwards. Um, can we have the Damodar children please come up? The performance is next. Damodar children, please come.
Let's try it. Hare Krishna. So the first performance is going to be by the Damodar kids. Okay. I engage group three years to six years of age. May I please request everybody in the audience to maintain silence. Hare Krishna. May I please request everybody in the audience to remain quiet so that we can really encourage our kids and their wonderful teachers who worked hard behind this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we will begin with the Damodar kids. These are our littlest angels, three years to five years of age. They are going to be performing a dance on Narsimha Aarti. Hare Krishna, please, please maintain silence because we will not be able to enjoy otherwise. Thank you. Shri Narsimha Jai Narsimha Jai Jai Narsimha Praladesha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringa Yeah. 
Let us introduce the Damodar children. Please say your name. Anay. Tabaduja. Kapel. Gorang. Gorang. Adu. Damodar. Nemai. Sanvi. Krishna Priya, Kaviviya, Aradhya, Kashvi, Gorika, Vamsuli. See your name. Vamsuli. Apomaya. Thank you very much. Thank you all the Damodar kids. Please come with me. Come with me, follow me, so we make space for the next presentation. Come. This way. Please follow me this way. Yes, we'll go. go. Hare Krishna. So we're going to get started with the Discover Yourself. Our Kaishwara kids. Can I have everybody please sitting down? Hare Krishna. So Kaishwara kids will be presenting Discover Yourself. So we're going to get started. Hare Krishna. May I please request everybody to be seated if you think the little kids are not going to listen. This next part is actually going to be the Discover Yourself program, the six week Bhagavad Gita course, which the kids did as part of their curriculum and they are going to present it to everybody. May I ask everybody to remain silent because this is, there's not going to be any music. It's going to be perfect philosophy. Please, thank you. Hare Krishna everybody, welcome to the Discover Yourself uh, 2015 presented by Kashara class. So first we're going to inquire our questions. Have you ever wondered, twinkle twinkle little, little star, how I wonder, who am I? Down here on this moving ball, simply wondering what am I here for? The, re the real inquiries of this world are who am I, where did I come from, where am I going, 
Is there life after death? What is the purpose of my existence? And why do I see so many problems around? We're always bogged down by stress, depression, anger, self-centeredness, and we don't know how to uproot them. We're always looking for happiness because we think that will uproot them, but except it's very temporary. So what is the real solution? Material advancement uh, um, has, is very high. We've got super fast cars, super fast trains, and super fast everything. Uh, so we have seaside resorts, modern architecture, and beautiful cities. But is it, are we really advancing? Because violence, unemployment, drug addiction, corruption, all these are also on the rise. There's always something missing, a fill in the blank. Nobody's happy all the time. One person has to be unhappy for every solution that we make. So we have to fill that blank. We must define a real problem, which is common to all. Nobody wants it, and no one can avoid it. These problems are birth, disease, old age, and death. And these problems are also caused by the body and the mind, other living entities, and nature. Why are we forced to abide these actions and, by these, and these problems? We don't want to go to the restroom, but we're forced to. Why? Rabbi Shabdev in the Bhagavatam said, of all living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard day and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for the dogs and hogs that eat stool. As a human body, as a human being, we are very rare and traveling to 8.4 million species of life, we have reached this human body and we should take advantage of it. In this picture, we see a human and a goat who is about to get killed because he's next to a butcher shop. Um, and uh, he's thinking life is good because he's he eating nice green grass. But later, he doesn't, he doesn't inquire what's going to happen in the future or what am I going to do? How do I get rid of it? But a human can think like that. And that's why it's our duty to uh, inquire about these questions. Atata Brahma Jignasa. Now is the time to inquire about the absolute truth. We should inquire what is the root cause of problems and what is the permanent solution to these problems. Curiosity saved the cat this time. No one is able to avoid these problems. Why is it designed this way? Do we all want to know? Albert Einstein said, there's nothing wrong with being unsure. Clever people ask the most questions. Thank you. Now we'll transition to Anshu and Avantika. Krishna, today we're going to present How Do We Know God Is Real? So the classic argument is I don't believe in God because I can't see him. However, there are many evidences that prove that we can see God without having to use our eyes to see him directly. So what are the answers to some of these questions, like the origins of the universe and the creator? Doesn't creation always have a creator? So here are what, are, here are what some of our famous scientists think. Albert Einstein once said that there's a perfect brain behind all the natural laws of physics. And Lord Calvin said that if you think strongly enough, you'll be forced by science to believe in God. So let's look at some aspects of our modern world. So in our modern world, people are either beautiful, ugly, rich, poor, strong, weak, women versus men. Who gets to decide all of this? Does it all just happen by chance? Isn't there someone that governs all these natural laws of physics, like the law of gravity? How is it so that it's just there? <coughs> Doesn't a law always imply a lawmaker? So here you can see an airplane and a bird. So an airplane has a designer who created it so it could fly. However, a bird has no designer. Is that reasonable? 
So there are three different ways to answer all these questions. The first is pratakshya praman, or sense perception. But our sense perception is imperfect. You, you can know this by asking yourself, can you see the mind or can you see the intelligence? And scriptures say we have four defects. We have imperfect senses, we are illusioned, we commit mistakes, and we have a, we have a propensity to cheat. So we know that we can acquire knowledge using our pratakshya praman. The second way to acquire knowledge is using anuman praman, which is logic and understanding. This is also imperfect. So using the story of the seven blind men, we can know how our logic and understanding is imperfect. So one day there were, there were seven blind men and a doctor wanted to convey an experiment. Um, so none of, an, none of them have ever seen an elephant bus before. So he called them outside and brought in an elephant. And he asked all of them to say that what, what is it? So each blind man touched a different part of the element. So the man who touched the trunk thought it was a snake, but the person who touched the tusk thought it was a sword, and the person who touched its feet thought it was a trunk. So this shows that our logic and understanding is imperfect. So how can we understand all the unknown questions, like who is God and who am I? The only way is to read the scriptures, which is hearing from authority. The scriptures are an, are an authoritative source, like the Bhagavad Gita or the Bhagavatam. The only way we can truly understand these questions is by reading the scriptures to understand God. So for example, if you want to know who your father is, you are going to ask your mother because she's a reliable source and she's your authority. So in the same way, by reading the scriptures, it's the only way we can truly understand who is God. Thank you for listening. Okay, Hare Krishna. We're going to talk about who am I by Advait and Madhav. So, are you this body? Are you worth $20? According to scientists, this body is made of calcium, iron, phosphorus, oxygen, hydrogen, and other substances, which equal only about $20. Is this all you are worth? What is death? When someone dies, who is gone? The bag of chemicals, the body is still there. Everything is same in the body. So what happens to that person? Who leaves? There has to be something more. Are you really worth $20? What happens when you die? Where does this con consciousness come from? There has to be something more to you. And there is the soul. The soul is the controller of the body and is the main living Th main thing in all living things. It cannot be cut, blown, burned, or replaced. It, it is the invaluable conscious giving item of the body. Symptoms, symptoms of the soul. The symptoms of the soul include consciousness, feeling, willing, thinking, emotions, desires, moving, seeing, speaking, memorizing, and responding. Who is changing? Dehi no sminya ta dehe, kaumaram yovanam jara, tata de hantara pragna, diras na tatrana mohyati. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes from into another body after death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. This is written in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 13. Basically, the soul does not change, it is the body which does. The soul passes through different bodies, birth after birth, but stays the same. On the other hand, the body changes through different stages of life. Characteristics of the soul. That which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. This is what the Bhagavad Gita chapter 2 verse 17 says. These are the characteristics of the soul. Unborn, eternal, ever existing, primeval, infinitely and infinitely small. Different bodies are like garments for the soul. Body versus soul. The body is matter, unconscious, temporary, dead, destructible, and changes. On the other hand, the soul is spirit, conscious, eternal, alive, indestructible, and does not change at all. 
Our bodies. The gross body is the body we see with hands, legs, and everything else. The gross body consists of five elements, which are earth, fire, air, water, and sky or ether. The subtle body is the body that we cannot see and is inside our body. We roam in this body after death and before our transfer to our next body. The subtle body consists of our mind, false ego, and intelligence. Summing it up, are you this body? No, you are the soul. The soul is part and parcel of the super soul or Krishna. It is in eternal, indestructible, and alive. On the other hand, the body is dead matter. Hare Krishna, um, I'm going to be talking about who God is and his identity. So there are three main parts of God. We call God Krishna, and Krishna means all attractive. And uh, there are three main parts, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Brahman is the effulgence of the Lord. Paramatma is the localized aspect of the Lord. He is in every single living being and near the heart region. And Bhagavan is the personal form of the Lord that we worship at the temple. The characteristics or the, the glories of the Lord are unlimited, and that's why um, the Lord has unlimited number of names. And um, so the, his names include Govinda, Madan Mohan, Shyam Sundar, Madhav, Radharaman, etc. Everything comes from Krishna. This, this is one of the uh, main characteristics of Krishna. Everything in this world ultimately came from him. This is... Um, this is shown in the first verse of the Brahma Samhita. Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadira Der Govinda Sarvakarana Karanam Krishna, who is known as Govinda, is the Supreme Godhead. He has an eternal, blissful, spiritual body. He is the origin of all. He has no other origin, and he is the prime cause of all causes. Krishna is also the Supreme Controller, so all the uh, aspects of this world that, that go on is ultimately controlled by Krishna. And this is shown in the Bhagavad Gita, 9th chapter, 10th verse. Maya dyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam hetunane nakanteya jagad viparivartate. This material nature, which is one of my energies, is working under my direction, O son of Kanti, producing all moving and non moving beings. Under its rule, this manifestation is created and annihilated again and again. So, all the, um, everything that happens in this world is ultimately controlled by Krishna, and it's, it works in the same way that the government does. Like, Krishna is like the king, he's at the top, and everything is controlled by him. The demigods are like the people of his, um, council or the people that control the different departments and Krishna tells them what to do like um, let's say there's a rain today the rain was ultimately caused by Krishna because Krishna told Varunadev to let the rains go Krishna is also the supreme enjoyer so any sacrifice that we do or austerity is ultimately enjoyed and uh, reciprocated by Krishna this is shown um, in the shloka, aham hi sarva yajnanam bhokta cha prabhureva cha natu maam abhijananti tatve natas chyavantite. I am the only enjoyer and the master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature fall down. So, uh, we are the jivas in this world and uh, in relation to Krishna, Krishna is the master and we are his servant. And that is our, um, our natural role in the world. And Krishna is vast and we are minute. It's like the ocean and we are like a drop from the ocean. And uh, Krishna is the original living being and we are part and parts and parcels of Krishna. And Krishna is the cause of all causes and we are caused by Krishna. Krishna, today we're going to talk about why bad things happen to good people, and uh, it's presenting by Upper Missing and Ramanani. 
So one main question that we see is why bad people are rich and why good people are poor. And uh, this kind of startles us because um, we know that God is, uh, we know that God is all powerful and we think that maybe, is he partial? Is he favoring only some people? And so uh, we, it comes to question that why can't he just liberate us if he wants us back, if he's all powerful? And uh, the answer to this is karma. Because, and as you can see here, what's go coming around is going around. And uh, Newton also says that uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And although he meant it in the way that a ball bounces on, in physics, that is basically the definition of uh, karma. And uh, there are three, also mo three modes of uh, nature. The first is sattvagana, or the mode of goodness. And in that, uh, people are uh, naturally very happy, and they lead a pious life. And they also are, are always seeking knowledge. In the middle uh, guna, or the rajaguna, mode of passion, uh, people have unlimited desires, and they're attracted to fruitive activities and sense objects. And their food is not necessarily top quality. It's too salty, too sweet, too bitter. And they're always wanting more. And tamaguna, or the mode of ignorance, uh, is basically defined by people who eat pungent, dry foods, and uh, they're unconscious of what they're doing, and they have ignorance between right and wrong. So the law of karma, Krishna says, is very difficult to understand, and so we're going to give it a little try. So when the first question comes to mind, that the laws of karma are set out, but who's enforcing it? Like a police has to take care of the laws, like somebody breaks it or a robber, he has to go catch him. Who's going to catch us? right? So if you pretend you're in the backyard and there's nobody seeing you, and then you just feel like doing something weird, and then, and then uh, somehow something is stopping you, and that's the paramatma, which is watching us in every action that we do. So there's two types of karma. There's good karma and there's bad karma. Good karma are the do's that are following the rules of God and that are according to the scriptures. And bad karma are the activities that are disregarding the scriptures and that are not following the rules of the God. Humans versus animals. So the laws of karma do not apply to animals because they're already in a lower stage of life and their life only goes up. And that's why they don't have the intelligence either to understand what karma is. And they have no uh, reason to ask because they don't have any sense of what intelligence is. There's two types of reactions for karma. There's immediate re reactions which you might get in the same lifetime. Or there's delayed reactions which you might get in the next lifetime. There's also individual karma and collective karma. You might do something wrong as a whole group or do it alone. Ignorance is not an excuse for karma. If you say, oh, I forgot or it was an accident, that won't take back the reactions of what you've done. So you might say, let's just balance it all out. Let's do bad karma and then do good karma to balance it and I will get no reactions. But Good karma and bad karma don't cancel each other. If you do good karma, you will get the good reactions, but if you do bad karma, you will also get the bad reactions. So you might be thinking, let's just do good karma from now on so that I don't get any bad reactions. But actually, good karma and bad karma are both bad. But that doesn't make any sense then. Then what do I do? Do something which produces no reaction, which is a karma. A karma is working for the service of the Supreme. It is the only purpose of our existence. The results are no reactions, and it nullifies the previous reactions we have of either good karma or bad karma. And it also reestablishes our lost connection with the Supreme.
So now that we've learned about all of this knowledge, the big question still remains, you know, how do we apply all of this to our lives? And so just some facts knowledge is that this knowledge we've learned is known as jnana, or theoretical knowledge. And when it's applied into our lives, it becomes vijnana, or realized knowledge. And it's really important to apply it into our lives, because if not, it would be like when you're sick, you go to the doctor, you get medicine, and he prescribes you medicine, but then you don't use it. It's completely pointless, which is why we have to apply this into our lives. And a big like misconception about the Bhagavad Gita is that it's meant for enunciates living in the Himalayas who all they do is meditate. And it's not like that. It's actually meant for householders who have a daily life, have jobs, have responsibilities, have families. And spirituality, it's not about leaving anything, but it's more about adding Krishna into your daily life, using what you have for the right purpose. And the first step to applying Bhagavad Gita into your life is to get a guru. And the gurus have a set of qualifications which they have to meet. And the first one is that they have to be connected to the parampara. So from Krishna to Brahma to Narada to Vyasa and then onwards, you, the guru has to be in that parampara. And secondly, he has to be fixed in devotional service. So strong sadhana, you know, chanting, they're reading Prabhupada's books. And he has to have controlled senses. And he has to be an acharya, so following Guru Shada Shastra. And he presents, most importantly, he presents Shastra as it is. So he doesn't add his own twist into Shastra, but he presents it just as Krishna said it to us. For the disciple, there's only three qualifications. And that's that the disciple has to have humility, service inquiry, and service attitude. So more in depth, you know, how do I really spiritualize my life? And there's a great acronym to do that, just A, B, C, D. So A, association of devotees. Come to the temple, come to Harinams, come to our programs, listen to the lectures, get that association. Uh, B, books. Read Srila Prabhupada's books, distribute Srila Prabhupada's books, give lectures on Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, but the books are really important. C, chanting. You know, have a set number of rounds you do every day. You chant the Maha Mantra. And this is really, really important because it helps you control your mind, helps you focus your mind on Krishna and away from the material world. Lastly, D, diet. So you should have a diet of just Krishna Prashadam. You know, no meat, no egg, probably no onion, garlic. And doing all of that will help you with the rest of the ABCs because it also helps focus your mind. And so a great event where all of this is incorporated is Harinam Sankirtan. We distribute books, we eat Krishna Prashadam, we chant and sing the Maha Mantra, and we have the Association of Devotees. So it's an all-in-one, and it's a great experience. And so, um, like, how has all of this started? And it all started with Srila Prabhupada, who traveled from India to, the, um, to America in his early 70s. And with him, he brought his books. And he, with his books, he helped us realize how to discover ourselves. You know, now we know that we are the soul, not the body. We know why bad things happen to good people. We know all of the stuff that's been presented in this presentation. And using all of that knowledge, we can help other people discover themselves too. Thank you and Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much, all the kids. May I request all the Kaishwara kids to stand and quickly introduce themselves. So the kids have spent their entire semester this year um, doing the Discover Yourself, the six day Bhagavad Gita course. And the slides that they have presented on this is something that they have compiled themselves. And of course, with the help of the Discover Yourself program. Hare Krishna, I'm Madhav. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, I'm Srivatsa. Hare Krishna, I'm Anshu. Hare Krishna, I'm Advait. Hare Krishna, I'm Aparamay. Hare Krishna, I'm Balaram. Hare Krishna, I'm Brinda. 
Hare Krishna, I'm Swaika. Hare Krishna, I'm Avantika. The next part of the show is our singing by Gopinath Kids. And Gopinath kids are the kids of 6 to 12. So we actually have arranged the kids according to maybe one drama, dance, um, a presentation this way. Um, so that they will, so we will not have all the dramas together, all the song together. So the kids are not in the age range, but they will be according to what they're presenting. So here we have uh, the kids presenting. Sorry, I said 6 to 12, it's 6 to 9. I have my little one reminding me that it's not 6 to 12, 6 to 9. So let's listen from them. Hey Govinda, hey Gopala. Hare Krishna. So our Gopinath kids are going to present this beautiful song, Hey Govinda Khe Hey Gopal. The song depicts the story of Gajendra from Srimad Bhagavatam and how Gajendra is in the jaws of death and he's praying to Krishna for help and Krishna actually comes and helps Gajendra and liberates him of that uh, situation. So Gopinath kids have worked whole year learning this song and uh, the, so we are going to listen to them. Only one thing about the repetition, uh, we are only going to, the audience can repeat only the Hey Govinda, Hey Gopal part. Rest of the lines have a different kind of tune. So we don't recommend uh, repeating that. Thank you everybody.
Hari Hari Bol. Thank you, Mataji. Hari Bol. Yes. So we will have, uh, let's have a big hand for Gopinath singing. Gopinath kids are also performing two dramas. As you can see, this beautiful costumes they are in. So the first drama that they will be performing is on Dhriva Maharaj. Gopinath kids, all the Amrish kids will be sitting and only the Dhruva kids will be standing now. Hari bol. Sudarshan chakra, can you keep the chakra now down? Okay, Amrish kids, please sit down. Dhruva kids, please stand up. Organize yourself as remember we have to look at the audience. Hare Krishna, we are standing right now. I need a chair in the center. Hare Krishna. Audience, please cooperate here. We need real good silence here. Hare Krishna. King Uttanapad had two queens named Sumiti and Surichi. Surichi was much more dear to King Sumiti was not so much dear and she had a son named Dhruva. We are in the palace of King Uttanapad with all his palace residents and we have Queen Suruchi and we have Uttama along with King Uttanapad. Okay, hold the mic. Let's play, Maharaj. Yes, Uttama, let's play. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. At this scene, Dhruva comes into the palace. Can we have a mic for Dhruva, please? Oh Maharaj, I also want to sit. I also want to sit on your lap. Dear son Dua, you are not qualified to sit on your father's lap because you did not take birth from my womb. First, you had to satisfy the supreme personality of Godhead, and then you'll be born in my womb, and then you could play with your dad. As a snake when stuck by a stick. Dhruva Maharaj had been stuck by the strong words of his stepmother, began to breathe heavily because of great anger. When he saw his father was just silent and did not protest, he immediately left the palace and went to his mother. We are now going to enter to stage two at the palace of Queen Suniti. The messengers are here informing Queen Suniti about what's really happened here. Dear Maharani, the king and mother Suchi did not let Dhruva sit on Maharaj's lap. Therefore, Dhruva is very sad and angry. Queen Suniti had already heard about this event. This incident was unbearable to Queen Suniti's patience. She began to burn as if in forest fire. And in grief, she just became like a burnt leaf. And so she lamented. 
She remembered the words of her co-wife with bright lotus-like face filled with tears. Thus, she spoke with Dhruva. My dear boy, do not wish for anything inauspicious for others. My dear son, whatever has been spoken by Suruchi is so, because your king, the father, does not consider as, me as his wife or even his maidservant. He feels ashamed to accept me. Therefore, it is a fact that you have been taken birth from an in unfortunate woman. My dear boy, please try to execute the instructions of your step stepmother. Without further delay, you must engage yourself in worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The instruction of Dhruva Maharaj's mother Suniti was actually meant for fulfilling his desired objective. Therefore, after deliberate consideration and with intelligence, he left his father's house. Dhruva Maharaj tries to go to a forest. The great sage Narada overheard this news and understanding all the activities of Dhruva, he was struck with wonder. He approached Dhruva and touching the boy's head with his all virtuous hands, he spoke as follows. My dear boy, you are only a little boy whose attachment is to sports and other things. Why are you so affected by words insulting your honor? Now you have to do mystic meditation under the instruction of your mother, just to achieve the mercy of the Lord. But in my opinion, such austerities are not possible for any ordinary man. It is very difficult to satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. It is better that you go home. When you are grown up by the mercy of the Lord, you will have a chance to do these mystic performances. My dear Lord Naraji, whatever you have explained is all good as far as I am concerned. I am covered by ignorance and this kind of philosophy does not touch my heart. O oh, learned Brahmana, I want to occupy a position more exalted than my father and grandfather. The great personality Narad Muni, upon hearing the words of Dhruva, became very compassionate towards him, and in order to show him his causeless mercy, he gave him the following expert advice. The instruction given by your mother Suniti to follow the path of devotional service is just suitable for you. You should completely absorb yourself in the devotional service of the Lord. Now I shall give you the mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Back at the palace of King Uttanapad, he was feeling miserable, thinking what he did to a child who was only five years old. My dear king, you look very sad. It seems that you've been thinking of something for a long time. Why is that? Is something wrong? Oh, best of the Brahmanas, I am very much addicted to my wife and I have been in all her behavior, even to my son who is only five years old. He is, he is unprotected and he might be hungry. And he might have lain down somewhere in the forest where the wolves might have come to attack him. O oh, King, your son is well protected by the Supreme Personality of God and his fame is already spread across the universe. King Uttanapada, after being advised by Narada Muni, practically gave up all duties in relation with his kingdom, which was vast and wide. He began to simply think of his son, Dhruva. Back at the forest, Dhruva Maharaj kept chanting the mantra that Narad Muni had provided him. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya For the first month, Dhruva Maharaj ate only fruits and berries on every third day. On the second month, he only ate every six days. For the third month, he drank water only every nine days. For the fourth month, Dua Maharaj became complete master of the breathing exercise. By the fifth month, the son of the king had controlled his breathing so perfectly that he was able to stand on one leg. When Dhruva Maharaj became practically one in heaviness with the universe, the total universal breathing became choked up and the great demigods in all planetary systems felt suffocated. 
thus took the shelter of the supreme personality of Godhead. Karthik. Dear Lord, what is happening? We feel all living entities suffocating. The breathing processes are choked up. We have never experienced such a thing. Since you are the Supreme Lord, kindly save us from this danger. My dear demigods, do not be disturbed by this. It is due to the severe prayers of Dhruva Maharaj. I shall stop this boy from his severe acts of austerities, and you will be saved from this situation. When the demigods were thus assured by the Supreme Personality of Thank God, you, my Lord. they were fe freed from all the fears, and after, after offering the obeisances, they returned to their heavenly planets. Then the Lord got back on Garuda, and went back to the forest where Dhruva was meditating. My dear Lord, you are all powerful. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto you. My dear Dhruva, I'm very happy with your prayers. All good fortune unto you. I shall award you the glowing planet known as a pole star, which will, which will continue to exist even after the end of the millennium. After your father goes to the forest and awards you to rule his kingdom, you will rule continuously for 36,000 years. You will never become old. Sometime in the future, your brother Uttama will go hunting in the forest. While absorbed in hunting, he will be killed. Your stepmother Suruchi will be maddened upon the death of her son and will also go to the forest, but she will be devoured by a forest fire. Despite achieving the highest award, Dhruva Maharaj did not look happy. Alas, just look at me. I am so unfortunate. I approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead who can immediately cut the chain of cycle of birth and that but out of my foolishness I have prayed for things that would bring me back to the material world. Thus such thinking, Dhruva Maharaj comes back to his dad and then the messengers inform King Uttanapad about the return of Dhruva Maharaj. Oh Maharaj, Dua is coming back. Dua comes back and pays obeisances to all his dear ones. First to Mother Suruchi. She blesses him with, with a full heart. Then Mother Suniti. Long live my son. Long live my son. He hugs his dad and he hugs his brother Uttama. And everybody is so happy. Dua Maharaj ki. Hari bol. Now, and the kids will introduce themselves. Please stand in the line, and from left, we'll introduce ourselves. Nitai. Hare Krishna, my name is Nitai, and I am Dhruva. Hare Krishna, my name is Radhik, and I was Nadad. Hare Krishna, my name is Vedan. Today, I played the demigod. Hare Krishna, my name is Pooja. Today, I played the role of a messenger. Hare Krishna, my name is Parantap and I play the role of King Uttanapad. Hare Krishna, my name is Madhavao, I play the abode of a passenger. Hare Krishna, my name is Akshat and I play the role of the demigod. Hare Krishna, my name is Mukun, I play the role of Uttama. Hare Krishna, my name is Kaita and I play the role of Tsuruchi. Hare Krishna, my name is Siddhi and I played the role of Lord Narayan. Hare Krishna, my name is Dhruti and I played the role of Suniti. Hare Krishna, my name is Karthik and I played the role of the Adhaming God today. Hare Krishna, my name is Sia and I played the role of Hare Bol! Hare Bol! <laughs>
Let's have a big hand for the Dhruv Maharaj team. We, took, we, we got a tour to going back to Dhruva Loka. Thank you. Hari Bol. Can we have Amrish Maharaj kids? So we, the next part of the program is from the same Gopinath. We have almost 28 kids enrolled into Gopinath class. So that's the reason that we have two dramas from the same class. So we will have um, Ambarish Maharaj into ISV now. Hari Bol. Silence. Maharaj Ambarish was the emperor of the entire universe. But he considered his opulence temporary. Indeed, knowing that such a material opulence is a cause of downfall into a conditioned life, he was unattached to his opulence. To worship Lord Krishna, Maharaj Ambrish, along with his queen, who was equally qualified, observed the vow of Ekadashi and Dwadashi for one year. He was about to end the Ekadashi with permission of the gathered Brahmanas by breaking the fast. Exactly at that time, however, Turvasamuni, the great and powerful mystic, appeared at the scene with his associates. Oh great sage, it's our good fortune that you are here. Please take some samtas prasadam. Thank you, O oh great king. But first, I will go to the Yamuna to take a bath. Here is the auspicious river Yamuna. Um, um. Turvasamuni had been gone for a long time. It was time to break fast. Amrish Maharaj was confused. He decided to consult the learned Brahmanas in the palace. O oh, learned Brahmana, disrespecting a learned sage like Durvasa and eating in his absence would be against the laws of respectful behavior. On the other hand, not eating on the auspicious day of Dwadashi would be considered flaw. Therefore, if you think it will be auspicious and not irreligious, I shall drink some water. In my opinion, drinking water may be accepted that eat, eating and also not eating. You should drink the water. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Durvasamuni, by his mystic power, had understood that King Ambrish had already drunk the water. He enters the palace. Welcome back, O oh great king, sage. Alas, just see the behavior of this cruel man. He is not the devotee of Lord Vishnu. Being proud of his so-called opulence, he considers himself God. Maharaj Ambarish, because of your misbehavior, I shall now punish you. He creates a fire demon. And the fire demon comes to attack Maharaj Ambarish. You will not kill Ambarish Maharaj. Here comes your end. Oh, what is this? What is this? Save me! Ah! <laughs> Lord Krishna sends Sudarshan Chakra to kill Ambarish, to kill Durvasa Muni because of his misbehavior. Just to protect himself, Durvasa Muni fled everywhere in all directions, in the sun, on the surface of the earth in the caves, in the ocean, on different planets of the, all the rulers of the three world. But wherever he went, he saw Sudarshan Chakra kept following him. He kept running. Finally, he comes to the abode of Lord Brahma. Oh my Lord, oh Lord Brahma, kindly protect me from the blazing Sudarshan Chakra sent by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sorry, I cannot help you in this matter. <laughs> there was someone disappointed. Keeps running. He's running across the globe. Finally to come at the abode of Lord Shiva. Oh my Lord. Oh Lord Shiva. Please protect me from the Sudarshan Chakra sent by the Supreme Personality. My dear son. I, Lord Brahma, and the other demigods who rotate in this universe under our misconception of our greatness cannot show any power to compete with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There was somebody disappointed again. He keeps running. He finally reaches the abode of Lord Narayana and Goddess of Fortune. 
O infallible, unlimited Lord, I am a great offender, my Lord. I have offended your most dear devotee. Kindly protect me from the result of this offense. I am completely under control of my devotees. Indeed, I am not at all independent. I sit only within the cold of their hearts. What to speak of my devotee? Even those who are devotees of my devotee are very, of my devotees are very dear to me. O oh, best of the Brahmanas, you should therefore go immediately to Maharaj Ambush. I wish you all good fortune. If you can satisfy Maharaj Ambush, then there will be peace for you. I wish you the best of fortune, thoughts. Devasamuni realizing his offense, he then reaches back to the palace of Maharaj Ambrish. O oh, Maharaj Ambrish, forgive me for my envy. I have created a bad situation for myself. Uh, also, Darshana Chakra, you are the sun, you are the moon, you are fire, you are earth, water, air, and sky. Please forgive this Brahmana. When the king offered praise to Sudarshana Chakra, the Sudarshan Chakra became peaceful and stopped burning Devasamuni, thereby forgiving him for his mistakes. O oh, Maharaj Ambarish, today I have experienced the greatness of the devotees of the Lord. For although I have offended you, you have played for my good fortune. Expecting in the return of Devasamuni, the king had not taken food for one full year. Therefore, when the sage returned, the king fell at his lotus feet, pleasing him with all respects, and fed him sumptuously. Omar Rajambarish, at first I thought of you as an ordinary human being, accepted your hospitality. But after, I could understand that you were the most exalted devotee of the Lord. Therefore, simply by being with you, touching your feet, and speaking with you, I have been pleased and the most blessed. Ambarish Maharaj Ki. Jai! Bol. Let's have a big please. hand for all the Gopinath kids. Introductions starting from left. Hey Krishna, my name is Garsandar and today I played the role of Ambarish Maharaj. Hare Krishna, my name is Avnish and today I play the role of fire demon. Hi, my name is Arush. Her name is Arushi and she played my um, follower. N um, Hare Krishna, my name is Anushri and today I played Durvasa Muni. Hare Krishna, my name is Vedant. Today I play the Sudarshan Chakra. Hello, Krish Hello. Hare Krishna, my, my name is Atin. I play the Brahmana. Hare Krishna, my name is Raghav and today I play the role of Lord Shiva. Hare Krishna, my name is Shri. I play the role of Goddess of Fortunes. Hare Krishna, my name is Angelika and today I play the role of Lord Narayana. Hare Krishna, my name, is, my name is Deepika and I play the role of Brahma. Hari Bol. Can I, Hari Bol. Can I please have all the Dhruva kids and sit on the stage. We will just quickly say the shloka that we learnt on Ambrish Maharaj and then we will be done from there. All, all the Gopinath kids on the stage please. Only the translation. Mm -hmm. So they are going to um, say the prayers that Ambrish Maharaj does. So they have learned the prayers of Ambrish Maharaj and they are going to chant that prayers. Chakra 
अचुत्या सत्कटोदये मुकुंदलिंगवाय दर्शन दिशु तद्भक्त्यगत्रास्पर्शे निगसंगमाम प्राणम चतत्पाद सरोज शोरबे श्रीमातुलस्यारसनं तदर्पिते पादोहरेश्वर पादानुसर्पने शिरोजी शिकेशा पादाभिवंदने कामनचतुसेनातु काम कामया नतो थाम शोका जनश्रेयति Hari Krishna, kids, please. Hari Ball, Gopinath kids, get in the uh, Balram room. There is a box. There is Mataji there. Take off all your costumes and give it to her. Please don't leave it anywhere. Aparupa Mataji will be there. And make sure that the costumes go in there. Okay? Our next, um, we're going to get ready for another beautiful song by Madan Mohan kids. May I ask all the Madan Mohan kids come on the stage? No, 
not just you. Keep it in the middle. Testing, testing. Okay. The brother, the brother. Yeah, you have to keep it like the other brother. No, no, I know. The whole thing. I know. You already tested it, it works. Yeah, it does. Testing, testing. Hare Krishna. So, um, Hare Krishna, everybody. So, we are starting with uh, the Dashavata Stotra song. Our Gopina kids, they have worked really hard singing the songs. And sorry, it's a Madan Mohan group. So, Madan Mohan kids have really worked very hard. Practicing that Dashavatar Stotra song describing the ten different incarnations of the Lord. So, the repetition uh, pattern for this uh, song is uh, we, uh, as the group sings one verse of the song, after they finish that verse, audience can repeat after them. So, we sing one verse at a time and repeat that verse. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
ಜಗದೀಶ ವಸತಿ ದಸನ ಶಿಖರೆ ದರಣಿ ತಬಲ ಸಸಿಕಲನ ಕಕ್ಕಳೆ ವಾಣಿ ಮಾಘ ಕೇಶವ ದ್ರೀತ ಶುಕ್ರ ರೂಪ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ರೇ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ರೇ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ರೇ ಕರ ಕಂಬಲ ಬರೆ ನಖಮದ್ಭುತ ಶೃಂಗ ದಲಿತ ಹಿರಣ್ಯ ಕಶಿಪೂತನು ಬೃಂಗ ಕೇಶವ ಗೀತ ನರೂಪ ಜಯ ಜಗದೀಶ ಶರೀರ ಜಗದೀಶ 
Pussy wish a day was a lamb, was a beautiful rendition. Jai. Thank you so much Madan Mohan group. Our next performance is by the Madan Mohan group on mind. How many of you are not affected by mind? Can you raise your hand? 
Yes, we're all affected by mind every single day. We're working very hard. So here we have a pantomime where we're going to understand how difficult it is to control the mind and how easy it is if we follow the process of Krishna consciousness. How easy it gets. So let's have a big hand for our Madan Mohan kids. They're going to get started with the mind and me. A pantomime. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare This is me and this is my mind My mind is very strong when I'm sleeping, it's always dancing.
Hari Hari. That was a beautiful pantomime. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. We are all in this boat every single day. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move to our one of our last performances. Kaishura kids are here. They will be singing Vrindavana Ramyasthana, followed by our finale performance of what they do in um, their band in um, you know when they perform outside so we're going to get started with Vrindavana Ramyasthana followed by Hare Krishna Mahamantra Bhajan so um, Hare Krishna, Vrindavana Ramyasthana. Yeah. 
ಪಾರ್ವತಮ ದಸ ಕೋಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾಶುಕಾಮೋಯ ಸದಾಯಿ ಸೂರು ಕಾಮೋರಮೇ ನರೋತಮ ದಸ ಕೋಯ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾಶುಕಾಮೋಯ ಸದಾಯಿ ಸೂರು ಕಾಮೋರ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare कृष्णा कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. <laughs> Thank you all. I think it has been a huge um, effort from the entire Vedic Academy staff. May I request all the staff members to be on um, our stage so that uh, we can have a big applaud for all the hard work we've done behind. Uh, starting with Damodha Raseshwari, Harikatha, um, and Aarti Mataji is missing. She was the craft teacher. Uh, Gopinath, uh, Poonam Mataji and Upper Rupa Radhika Mataji, please on the stage so we can, we have to really wrap it up in a minute. Um, and Madan Mohan, um, Kamalashri Mataji and uh, Radhika, Prem, Radhika Prema. Okay. And um, Kaishwara, it's Vishakarila Mataji and myself. And uh, we have our uh, upper, An Ananya Radhika Mataji um, for um, music. 
and manjula kanta mathaji our treasurer we have, we've we've had a wonderful um, very big team we're missing our dramod um, um brajivilasini um and um sachin and then imai prabhu we're missing him as well anuradha mathaji for all our costumes and yeah it takes a lot of um, effort to help the kids learn krishna conscious let's have a big hand for all of them thank you hare krishna may i request shishika prabhu nirakula mata ji if we can take a quick picture and then i'm really sorry we are probably um, almost there <laughs> we can have uh, we're going to start with our sunday feast prabhu Oh, some down. Okay. Good. Thank you all so much. We probably have about five minutes, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Prabhu. We <laughs> we were we went ten minutes above our schedule. To all the teachers, the Vedic Academy, to all the kids, to all the parents who've enrolled their kids, everyone who's worked together for this, it's a extremely edifying experience to watch the kids grow up with the culture of Krishna consciousness. This Vedic Academy is what it's purported to be, and that is the means by which these kids can develop the structure early in their life for understanding the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. I particularly like how it's based on the arts and music, because that goes deeply within the heart, and uh, it's something that is. Easily picked up from anyone. In fact, Shri Prabhupada specifically wanted a cultural revolution to express through culture the science practice of Krishna consciousness. And if we note in the Brahma Sanghita, in the verse Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Abis Tabirari Eva Nijarupa Taya Kalabi, the purport is a description of all the activities going on in Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world. Which are all arts, dancing, music, and so forth. So I felt like we entered into that realm today, and we really did. The uh, the innocent uh, participation of the children with great enthusiasm. You've uh, fostered in them something that will last uh, not only in their lifetimes, but will go on to people all over the world because of their influence. I saw with the older kids. I'm just you can see from the gradations. Of the kids in the different classes, how they're growing up and maturing, and you can see what the results are as they go through this process from the very beginning, and it's quite impressive. So, great achievement for all of you. It's it's a big day for ISV to to see the fruits of of more than a decade of of work with the kids that you've put in painstakingly. So we thank you very much. And all glories to the Vedic Academy. Gaur Premanande Hari Bol. I'm a little emotional. <laughs> um, I was just overwhelmed by everything today. The uh, presentations in the plays, in the in the chanting, in the philosophy. I'm so grateful. To all of you, you're doing a spectacular job. We're so proud of you, and I feel so fortunate to be a part of this loving community. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. <laughs>